is working. Okay, that's step number one. <laughs> so uh, thank you for bearing with us today, and those of you that made the effort to come here in person, really glad that the snow did not uh, become what it uh, was forecasted to be, although I'm sure Mayor Lynch would have cleared this very efficiently so that we could all get here today. So thank you for making the effort to come in person. And those of you that are joining virtually, we're glad to have you on as well. This is our first in-person meeting since uh, COVID began. And uh, so uh, this is a new day for us or new time for us here in 2022. And it's the first time that we've attempted a hybrid uh, meeting, which is uh, something the uh, NERPSI officers uh, wanted to, to, uh, to do today. So we're going to try to make this work. I want to uh, just thank Candy and Meredith for all the work they put into the logistics of figuring this out. And Kevin, sorry, thank you. Uh, for making this work. And with that caveat, if you've done hybrid meetings in any setting before, you know how uh, technically challenging and awkward this often is. So I'm just going to ask for a lot of grace. <laughs> um, and uh, although we try to be as efficient in, as possible in the progression of the meeting, we're probably going to need to take a little bit more time through things to make sure we get votes. We still have to do roll call votes because we're uh, partly virtual. So that will take some time. And the other thing I'm going to ask is when somebody makes a motion and seconds, uh, although I know it's not required by Robert's Rules of Order, thanks to our parliamentarian, Michael Griffin, I've learned that um, we do have a custom of tracking uh, who motioned and seconded. So it's going to be extra important in this setting to allow time to clarify. And I will ask uh, the outgoing chair and the presumably incoming chair to stop and make sure that you have uh, the actual names uh, before proceeding on with the uh, with the vote of who motioned and seconded. So uh, thanks for bearing with us. And anybody who's speaking in the room today, this is our because of those challenges of feedback and all the rest. What I'm standing before in this speakerphone is our only microphone for this meeting. So if you what we will try to do is if you're in the room and have a comment, I'm not sure if it's going to pick up. So one of us that are closer to the speakerphone will likely repeat. The question, if it's from somebody in the room, somebody on Zoom, we should probably have no problem hearing. But in the room, we may need to repeat repeat the question. I will, I will let you know because I'm going to be great. Meredith, uh, be as an example, <laughs> Meredith has just made a comment in the room, which I'm sure you couldn't hear. Uh, Meredith is able to hear everything that's being said, and she will uh, be able to take care of repeating any questions that are that are said. So. Thanks for uh, bearing with that little introductory thing, and we'll 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 try to make this work and go from here. So thank you. With that, take it away. Okay. Uh, Ty, 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 Ty. This is Dave. I just want to take exception to one thing you said. There is a snowstorm going on in downtown Valparaiso as we speak. One here in Michigan City also. So your, your your comment about how we dodged it, it may be a little premature. Ty, I think you're on mute over there at the office. Ty, are you able to unmute? Ty? He's, not, he's not muted. He's not muted. Okay. He's just ignoring my comment. <laughs> I think he might be. <laughs> we think you might be muted. Ty, we can't hear you from the room. In the, okay. Hold on one second. We're going to get this unmuted.
Okay, how's that? Much better. We're get feedback, though. Can you hear us now? We hear you in triplicate. Yeah, we're, you're reverberating. That uh, kind of reminds me of the 1960s on reverb. <laughs> It was, unless it turned it back in. Yeah, it's off. I think that fixed it. Okay. 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 Moving right along. Well, I spoke too early. <laughs> okay, shall we try to? No. Nope. 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 Technical difficulties. What if we uh, turned off the speaker on that on this? Okay, yeah, we'll try that. But I think maybe we could have our report of uh, new appointments to the commission by Attorney David Hollenbeck. That's that better. While we're proceeding, that's better. No reverb now. Mr. Hollenbeck, George, have Are we you done the pledge of allegiance? allegiance? He's talking. I'm sure he's talking. Yes, the yes, pledge has been done. done. Yeah. Okay. We'll go this way. So. Uh, Go ahead, Matt, want to say that. Okay, again. Mr. Hollenbeck, would you please uh, provide information on new appointments to the commission? Uh, I will do that. Uh, I would have the question of whether we've done the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we did that here. Would you like us to do it again? <laughs> no, I, I just didn't. I wasn't privy to it. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, well, I'm glad you did. In fact, in public, we I, did respect the flag and honor... Uh, all those here present, and I'm sure that those who are on Zoom uh, probably can join in and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I did not hear the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, we did, in fact, have the Pledge of Allegiance in. in okay, uh, moving, moving right along. Moving right Thank along. You. I will respond to your request. We have three uh, certificates of employment, uh, in, uh, employment appointment uh, to acknowledge this morning. Uh, not necessarily in any particular order. Um, uh, Jeremy Rivas, who is the president of the Porter County Council, informs us that uh, the appointment of Mike Jessen to our commission should be acknowledged. Uh, secondly, the town of Ogden Dunes, Doug Cannon, the president of the town council, indicates that Scott Kingan is the appointment from that community. And thirdly, a certificate of appointment received from the town council of the town of Burns Harbor, indicating that Angie Scott, the council president, is the appointment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, all three uh, certificates of appointment are in proper form and qualify under our enabling statute. And each of these three people should be welcome um, as commission members. Okay. Now, uh, does this require a vote? Yep. Nope. In that case, we have accepted all three of the, the appointments and uh, we shall welcome them wholeheartedly to the commission. Next on the agenda is the minutes. As, uh, if everyone would uh, respond to the roll call to approve the minutes, we need a motion to approve. Michael Griffin of Hiram means that the minutes be approved. We have a motion by Mr. Michael Griffin that the approve and a second for Mr. Tun. Are there any comments or questions on the minutes? Hearing none, can we proceed with the roll call? Yes. Michael Allen. Wayne Hart. I'm going to start that over again. Okay. All right. Roll call. Roll call. Kyle Allen. Kyle. Dwayne, Arndt. Dwayne Arndt. Jeanette Baps. Janet, Janet Beck. Jeff Benson. Jeff Benson. Here. Here. Thank you. Jim Biggs. <laughs> Kevin Breitsky. Yes. Thank you. Charlie Brown. Robert Carnahan. 
Yes. Thank you. Bill Carroll. You're welcome. Anthony Copeland. Jocelyn Denham. Yes. Thank you. Tom Dermody. Yes. Thank you. Don, uh, John Derwinski. Present. Thank you. Dinah Dumbris. <laughs> Dinah Dumbris. Denise Ebert. Here. Here. Thank you. Bill Emerson. Yes. Thank you. Robert Forster. Yes. Thank you. Michael Griffin. Yes. Thank you. Richard Hardaway. Yes. Thank you. Tony Hendricks. Jack Geralds. Mike Jessen. Yes. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Scott Keenan. Present. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Justin Keel. Yes. Thank you. Andrew Kiris. Yes. Thank you. Robert LeMay. Yes. Thank you. Sue Lynch. Here. Thank you. Sheila Matias. Tom McDermott. Lori Mercer. Here. Thank you. Wendy Miss. Here. Thank you. Mike Molenauer. Edward Morales. Matt Murphy. Yes. Thank you. Dwayne Perry. Present. Thank you. David Peeler. Yes. Thank you. Jim Pressel. Jerome Prince. Rick Rifa. Yes. Thank you. Tom Schmidt. Yes. Thank you. Angie Scott. Brian Snedekor. Steve Spibar. Greg Stinson. Yes. Thank you. Gerald Sweats. Yes. Can't hear anybody else responding either, so. Sharon Zuido. Mary Tannis. Probably couldn't hear me. Yes. She didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. Did, I, did, did I miss somebody? Mike did Moldenauer, did you hear me? I did not, but thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Charlie Brown. Did you get Brown. Yes, thank you. Jim Tun. George Topple. Yes. John Yelkich. One moment. Thirty-one. We made quorum. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you very much for uh, for attending under these unusual and difficult circumstances. Thanks it gives me an honor uh, for the next uh, next item on our agenda. But uh, I'll save my remarks until after Ty takes it away and introduces the presentation of the Norman E. Tuffert Award. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, do we want to make the switch back or stay with this for right now? Uh, maybe we'll stay with this and then switch it over. So apparently the, uh, the, the phone line that we're using for the microphone somehow got muted on, through Zoom. So I think we've got that figured out, but I'll stay with this right now. And in fact, um, I can, I'm not going to give anything away quite yet, but I can bring this to you. You don't necessarily have to come up here then. So we'll work it out. So, so the Norm Tufford Award, we have not had one of these, uh, we did not do one last year in the midst of COVID, and, uh, but that makes the recipient of this year's award no less, uh, no less worthy. In fact, maybe even more so because uh, the, this, the momentum built up to this point uh, to be able to receive the Tufford Award today. And um, I'm going to actually turn this over to uh, our surprise guest, uh, my predecessor, John Swanson, uh, who is on the call. And if uh, John can unmute himself and uh, take it from here, I am going to let uh, John introduce this year's recipient of the Norman E. Tufford Award, named after the very first NERPSI Executive Director, and was uh, created during uh, John Swanson's tenure to honor 
those that have that have uh, contributed, those staff or commissioners that have contributed a great deal of regional leadership and regional commitment and espouse the ideals of Norm Tufford, uh, who helped pull together NERPSI to start with. So with that, uh, John, I'm going to turn it over to you if you're able to jump in. Yes, thank you, Ty. And good morning, all, and greetings from Beverly Shores, where I'm waiting to get out of my driveway. Uh, and I commend Jeff Benson for being able to do so. Uh, but I want to thank you all for having me today. And I especially want to thank you for presenting this year's Norm Tufford Award to a very worthy candidate, Steve Strains. Now, many of you are familiar with Steve or have had the occasion to interrelate with him during the course of his more than 40 years of service. Uh, and indeed, several of you have known Steve even longer than me, including Commissioners McDermott, Griffin, Reitsky, and Attorney Hollenbeck. Uh, he is, by the way, the most tenured staff person in the history of the agency. Uh, but I believe that's important to recognize how his service to NERPSI in Northwest Indiana was so meritorious. I first met Steve when I came to NERPSI in 2004. And one of the first things I did after I started was to have one-on-one -on -one interviews with each of the NERPSI staff members. And to help them prepare for these interviews, I asked them to consider responding to three questions. One, what do you like most about NERPSI? Two, what do you like least about NERPSI? And three, what would you like to see changed? Now, I'm not going to tell you what Steve told me during our session as I told the staff that the responses would be held in confidence. However, I can tell you that Steve was very well prepared for this session and his comments were thoughtful and insightful. But I'd like to use the same framework for my remarks today. That is, what do I like most about Steve? What about least about Steve? And what would I change? Uh, starting with what do I like most? Steve is truly a person of character. It's a lengthy list, uh, but I'd start out by borrowing from the Boy Scouts that Steve is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. But let's add to that list, starting with professional. When I came here, Steve was the only staff member who had the American Institute of Certified Planner certification. He was conscientious about maintaining his professional skills, and he was always looking for ways in which he could broaden and sharpen them. And he put his professional skills to great use at, at NERPSI, as he had an active and often major role in virtually every transportation plan produced by NERPSI during his tenure. I'd also cite, cite Steve's leadership abilities. He had management responsibilities for much of his time with the agency, and I was pleased to have him serve as both the director of planning and as my deputy director. He served as the principal staff support for our transportation policy committee for many years and regularly represented the agency before local, state, and first federal officials and always succeeded in gaining their respect. He had the lead role in the handling of our periodic transportation recertification reviews. And he served as the team leader for our 2040 Comprehensive Regional Plan, which received the American Planning Association's Outstanding Planning Award in 2013. And it was appropriate that Steve accepted that award on behalf of the agency. Steve's also exemplary in his dedication to NERPSI in the region. Going back to my initial interview with him, I recognize how strongly you felt about how Nipsey, Nipsey could make this region a better place for all of us to live, work, and play. And in retirement, he continues to reside in the region in the city of Hammond. Uh, now, what do I like least about Steve? <laughs> He's a diehard Green Bay Packer fan. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Yeah, we probably should have attributed this to his growing up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. But you think that this would change uh, once he committed himself to living in the region for the rest of his life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Bears would have been great, but I think uh, we would have even been satisfied with the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> um, 
Therefore, I think it goes out saying that's the one thing about Steve I would change. <laughs> but I, I'd like to just close my remarks uh, by mentioning that was Norm Tufford who first brought Steve to NERPSI back in the 1970s, hiring him first as an intern from Valparaiso University and then as a junior planner once he had completed his master's degree at Southern Illinois Edwardsville. It's quite fitting that this year's award for outstanding service to NERPSI and the region goes to one of Norm's best hires. Steve Strains. Congratulations, Steve. All right, I think we're back. Can you all hear? I don't think we lost anyone. Excellent, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Okay. we're here. Great, thank you so much. We had an internet uh, glitch on this end. Uh, thank you, well, I guess I won't say the name of the company that services us. So <laughs> thank you, John, for those comments. I think we lost the very last sentence or two, but I think you were just about to, uh, to, to make it official, which we will. Which we will. So thank you for those comments. And before I, well, I will do this because here's the camera. I'm gonna present this award to Steve, but I have the privilege of having Steve as my deputy director then for, I believe three years, because 16, is that right? That you were? Yes, yep, that you retired the week that the Cubs won the World Series. <laughs> and I actually have, I will. Uh, I actually have a video of Steve's last day in the office, so I'm just going to have to paint this picture for you because I'm not going to. I won't be able to pull it up. Steve is dressed in Cubs paraphernalia, so imagine him in in Cubs jersey and the whole works. And uh, Holly, his uh, beloved wife, who is right uh, back here in the behind us here. If I'll do that just a minute to say hello, um, Holly, I believe had given uh, you a bugle. Uh, around the, uh, uh, a cornet. A cornet, excuse me. I had just joined the South Shore Brass Band and we play cornets. Very good. All right. So just giving him a cornet for his retirement, et cetera. Steve had it in the office on his last day if because he's that committed a musician. And very fittingly, I have a video so I can prove this of Steve very reverently playing taps in the copy, copy room of NERPSI moments before he headed out the door. So uh, I would love it if he played today. He did not bring his cornet today, I don't think. I do have it, but it's frozen right now. Okay. <laughs> but you should, go, you should go hear him. And with that introduction, I'm going to put this in the camera first so you can see what it says. Uh, I'm very happy to present the Norm Tufford Award this year to Steve Strains. Thank you. There is a standing ovation in the room if you were here. This <laughs> Very good. And I've asked Steve if he'd like to say a few words, if you'd like. And I might uh, suggest you get kind of, I know it's awkward because everybody else is in the room here, but if you get uh, here and kind of direct yourself towards this, that's probably going to be better. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, and thank you, John. Uh, John really helped uh, advance my career in the, in the latter stages of my career. So. I have uh, John Swanson to thank for that. I have uh, my wife, Holly, to thank too. For the 43 years I was here and she was with me every step of the way. Uh, this award is special to me for a couple of reasons. If you look at the list of those people who have received this award in the past, that's a pretty special group of commission members and staff members. So it's an honor to join that group of people. 
Um, secondly, I, I knew uh, Norman Tuffer. Um, yes, he, he, did, uh, he did hire me as a summer intern. And uh, I was uh, lucky to join the staff full time after. And after Norman retired, I would see him from time to time and I would take him to lunch. So it was, it was fun to keep up with him even uh, after his uh, retirement. Uh, and, and he and his uh, lovely wife, uh, Jane. So I thank you for this, uh, for this honor. Um, I didn't see it coming, wasn't holding my breath, um, but uh, I thank you so very much. And I made the trip from Hammond to Portage about 4,000 times. <laughs> well, it was worth coming just one more time. Uh, and I lived through that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. And I'll also say for those in the room, if you'd like to pick up a copy of this, uh, we printed out some copies of one of Steve's last acts was to help put together uh, for our 50th anniversary of NERPSI, the, uh, the history of NERPSI from 1966 to 2016. And uh, that is available on our website for anyone who would like to go there. But we also have some printed copies here for anyone in the room that would like to take that in, in honor of Steve. And I'm sure if you asked, he would sign it for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was involved in most of those activities. <laughs> that's, what's, that's, a, that's what's such a great record about this. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for your service. Steve. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to try to switch over to the? Uh, we're going to try to switch back to the speakerphone, which may be a little bit easier for the chair. So bear with us just one moment. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? I see, I see at least one head nod. Can someone give a big, uh, Mitch, can you hear us? Okay, great. We're good. If I may. Hi, I need to interrupt. Uh, the YouTube stream has stopped. I just want to make sure that our technical group understands that. Whoever is dealing with you. Okay, Mitch, can you, since you're our guinea pig, can you say something again? Uh, I think we can get one. Did anyone else go out? Can, uh, can someone say? We're here. We're here. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay. I think we're good to go. Okay. Yeah. Shall I proceed? <laughs> I just wanted to extend my uh, thanks to Steve for uh, all that you've done over the years. Uh, Steve's an extraordinary musician, uh, a fine gentleman, fellow golfer, and uh, I think it's well deserved. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate seeing you again, and God bless you. Thank you, Roger. We'll see you on the golf course next week. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a date. Next on the, the agenda is uh, the 2021 NERPC Annual Report by Ty Warner. Take it away, Ty. Very good. I'm going to speak loud. Uh, well, I've got the camera right in front of me. So hopefully you're picking me up on the uh, speaker. And because uh, of these challenges, I'm going to be actually very brief with this. But we, uh, we do at this time produce an annual report of NERPC's past activities. And I'm just going to, uh, if you can, oh, wait just a minute for this to load. I'm just going to walk you quickly so you see what's coming. We will uh, send to distribute copies of this uh, later so you have this, but uh, this is our activities of 2021. And I just want to commend staff, commissioners, everybody in this room for all of their efforts in making everything work here at Nerpsey despite these challenges like we're even experiencing today. We do have a broad region just like we experienced with uh, that summer receiving snow and summer not. And likewise, the challenges across this region are always different for every community across that whole stretch. 
But as you know from Nurse's history and all Steve Strain's good work for the time that he was here and John Swanson's good work as well, um, as you know, that's what NERPSI is about, is no matter who's facing what challenges in whatever part of the region, somebody is available to help that other community. And that is what this whole, uh, what this whole organization is about. So I'm just going to give you a brief uh, run through of what's in this report that you can read at some other point when, you know, when we distribute it to you. NERPSI's main issues, as you know, our main uh, focus areas as given to us in state statute are for transportation, the environment, and economic development. And this report for 2021 captures each one of those areas. We do it through uh, uh, governmental funding streams uh, that Talia Jones, our chief financial officer, keeps in tip-top shape. And so right off the bat, as appropriate for an annual report, you can see our expenditures. This includes uh, not only NERCSI's operating budget, but it's, uh, it's passed through funds for, for the federal transit, from the Federal Transit Administration for transit operators. Uh, $7,142,319, and as you can see on the expenditures, we use every bit of those funds. So uh, you can see how that breaks down in this report in these pie charts when we get this out to you. Um, here's the uh, summary of transportation activities for 2021. One of the highlights for that is the uh, hiring of our Director of Transportation, Thomas Dow, who is on this uh, call. And you may, uh, you may or may not, depending on, uh, I'm not sure exactly how we go through some later items in the agenda, you may hear from him, you've heard from him in the past. Uh, but that was a big, uh, big uh, part of uh, propelling our, our whole program forward. This also includes our function as a metropolitan planning organization, which is a federal designation. You'll be hearing from uh, Federal Highway and Federal Transit Administration about our certification review later in this agenda. Another big score in 2021, as Mitch Barloga is, of course, uh, more excited than anybody about, is the award of uh, $17 million for the Marquette Greenway. This uh, comes after multiple attempts with the uh, federal government and fourth time was the charm. This is a huge win for the region to connect a 60-mile uh, trail from uh, Chicago to New Buffalo, Michigan. So that'll be ongoing over these years to get that completed, but that was a huge highlight of 2021. You can see in this report how the uh, Transportation Improvement Program, which is Charles Brasky as our tip manager, how that breaks down in those expenditures, where those projects are located. Uh, thanks for, to, uh, to, to, to Kevin Pulley and, um, and Peter uh, Kimball for putting this information together and Charles uh, also for summarizing all the expenditures. I know that I'm going through this fast and I'm aware of that. I'm just giving you an overview of what's in this report. The commission took on a lot of other activities at the Council of Governments. These are uh, uh, summarized here as well. One of which uh, uh, is the uh, approval of a resolution for the support of the Calumet National Heritage Area, um, helping to designate funds for the Recover MWI uh, program, which uh, we'll just hear about later, and uh, other issues of relevance to the region that affect all communities here. We provided uh, technical services in doing early analysis of census data and what that's looking like for shifts in the region. The e-commerce study that uh, Iman uh, Ibrahim worked so hard on and uh, Scott Weber helped a lot with as well, was the recipient of an award from the National Association of Regional Councils on the regional scale. And the ADA transit map, which we gave you a presentation here at this uh, group in uh, earlier. And then on the environmental front, um, we have, uh, I'm happy to say, just as an update, we received the renewal or the, the award to continue the greenhouse gas inventory work that's been ongoing in conjunction with uh, Indiana University, so that will be uh, carrying on. This is Captain Luther's program area as the director of environmental, environmental programs, and uh, there's a lot of information here you'll be able to read. Denary Kane, you'll be hearing from later in the meeting today, uh, the furtherance of our economic development district, which as you know, was over 10 years in the making to finally get that designation and couldn't have come at a better time for the uh, pandemic to receive funds such as Recover NWI, our revolving loan fund program, not just for LaPorte County that we've done for some time, but for the entire Northwest Indiana region. Well, we'll say more about that a little bit later. And then of course, our staff names, some staff photos, and all of your names, uh, which just leads me to end this really high-level, quick uh, overview by just thanking you all for your service. It, uh, between uh, the trips that you make here, the multiple meetings on committees besides just this in-person forum, 
Uh, your efforts, your dedication are, are much, much appreciated, and you literally make nursing what it is. It doesn't function without you. And that's not just hyperbole, that is really the way it is. So thank you for your service and, and for your involvement. I'm happy to say, too, you will, I, I don't want to steal their thunder a little bit later in the agenda, but I, I do want to say this because it reflects well on staff's ability to keep our programs running in a pandemic. And that is that uh, we had a perfect storm this year of having both our every three year, hence the word triennial, triennial review from the Federal Transit Administration on how we, uh, how we administer our, our, trans our transit funds for public transit. That coincided during the pandemic uh, this past year in 2021 with our once every four year certification review as a metropolitan planning organization. So in addition to everything else that was going on this year, we had those fall about at the same time, which I see Steve nodding his head in the back can attest that is, that is, that is not a lot of fun. <laughs> Although I have to say, and I'm not just saying this because they're on the call, <laughs> but I'm glad they can hear it. Our federal partners at Federal Transit Administration and the Federal Highway Administration have been uh, really great to work with in this virtual environment. And uh, we all made do uh, with, with these circumstances. So, Although I'm stealing a little bit of thunder from the uh, report that will happen later from, uh, from our friends from USDOT, I just want to commend staff that despite those challenges, both the Triennial Review, which the Triennial Review received uh, no deficiencies uh, upon its completion, and the Certification Review uh, for our recertification as an MPO received no corrective action. So despite everything, uh, we're very pleased, and I just want to thank staff for keeping everything going amongst these these challenges. And that will help me segue into uh, the last thing that I have to say, which is the recognition of a staff service award, which we do for, from time to time at key intervals. And uh, I, this award today, because of five years of service, goes to Lisa Todd, who is our procurement person here at NERPSI. So you have dealt with Lisa, if you've dealt with any of our contracts, any of our uh, bus purchases, uh, any of that, she stays on top of, of all of that. And as uh, Dave Hollenbeck can attest, she has some legal background as well, which helps her administer that even more effectively. And so I just, uh, she's not in the room because we've tried to keep things spaced here. She's here in the office though. So Lisa, I don't know if you're uh, able to turn on a camera. I'm not gonna force you to, because that may be unexpected. But uh, if you are on, you are more than welcome to say hello. There you are, there's Lisa. So um, I don't wanna put you on the spot, Maybe you could just at least say hello so that your picture flashes up on the speaker screen here so they can recognize you. Yes, hello everyone and thank you Ty for that recognition. I appreciate it and look forward to many more years here at NERPSI. Thanks. Thank you so much Lisa, I appreciate it. And with that, I'm trusting you can hear me okay. I am done with my spiel. So uh, Mr. Chair, it's back to you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, Officers and Executive Board for 2022 and the report of the nominating committee. And if I might, I'd like to say a couple of words and I'll try to keep it brief, but uh, thanks to Michael Griffin uh, for being here and uh, all of your service. And uh, I, as Michael can attest and so can uh, other people involved in the, in the process, having your trust as chair of emergency is an incredible honor as well as a tremendous privilege and also, in fact, a great learning experience. Uh, the opportunity to serve you would not be possible without the support of my beautiful wife, Pam, and countless others who've made it possible to serve as chair, in particular, the citizens of Union Township, uh, that's a Porter County, because there is a Union Township in LaPorte, um, and <clears throat> Lake, citizens of Lake LaPorte and Porter Counties, that make up the planning organization. Thanks to all the former and current emergency commissioners, the executive board and officers. Good luck and best wishes for success to the incoming chair, Justin Keel. Uh, assuming that we uh, have a quorum and we, uh, we actually are able to change the gavel. <laughs> uh, and all emergency commissioners. Of course, thank you executive director, Ty Warner, excellent staff at emergency and attorney David Hollenbeck who day in and day out create exemplary products of mercy. Uh, their contribution to the success, success of NERPSI are sincerely appreciated. 
May the coming year bring us great joy, abundant laughter, and the influence of our success and fondest dreams. I shall continue to serve Nerfsey in the future and proud of the personal relationships and friendships that have evolved during my privilege to serve you as commissioner, member of the executive board, and chair. Thank you, and God bless you. And now, without further ado, I'd like to give you the report of the nominating committee. If you turn to page five, you'll see that in your packet, if you have that in front of you. Uh, the nominating committee uh, came up with the following slate, and I, I'll read that uh, because if you don't have it in front of you, so you shall know so you can vote. Uh, for 2022, for the Executive Board of Nerve Seas, Chairperson Justin Keel, Vice Person Richard Hardaway, Secretary Greg Stinson, Treasurer Tom Dermody, Executive Board from Lake County, Wendy Miss and Bill Emerson. Executive Board for LaPorte County, Sheila Matias, Lori Mercer. Executive Board for Porter County, Jim Tun, Sue Lynch. And the Governor's appointment, Jim Pressel. And that would make me the immediate past chair. So um, if there's any, we have a motion to approve this uh, slate. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the slate as presented. Second, Jeff Benson. Thank you, Mr. Breitke and Mr. Benson. For Kevin Breitke and uh, Jeff Benson. Are there any questions, comments before we call the roll? Hearing none, shall we call the roll? <laughs> you're, you're just going to have to talk that we're over here. So then you'll have to talk loud. Uh, I can do that. I'm going to do this video. Oh, okay. I know that Yeah. Okay. Hi, Alan. Yes. Joy Arndt. Matt Bass. Janet Beck. Jeff Benson. Aye. Thank you. Tim Big. Kevin Bryce. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. Robert Carnahan. Yes. Thank you. Bill Carroll. Kathleen Denham. Yes. Thank you. Tom Dermody. Yes. Thank you. John Derwinski. Yes. Dinah Dubrick. Denise Hebert. Yes. Thank you. Bill Emerson. Yes. Thank you. Robert Forster. Yes. Thank you. Michael Griffin. Yes. Thank you. Richard Hardaway. Yes. Thank you. Mike Jensen. Yes. Thank you. Scott Keegan. Yes. Thank you. Justin Keel. Yes. Thank you. Andrew Kiris. Yes. Thank you. Robert LeMay. Yes. Thank you. Sue Lynch. Yes. Thank you. Lori Mercer. Yes. Thank you. Wendy Mitt. Yes. Thank you. Mike Mollenhauer. Mike Mollenhauer. Pat Murphy. Dwayne Perry. Yes. Thank you. David Feeler. Yes. Thank you. Rick Rifa. Yes. Thank you. Tom Schmidt. Yes. Thank you. 
Greg Simpson. Yes. Thank you. Gerald Sweat. Yes. Thank you. Mary Tannis. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Therefore, the, the motion change of the gavel. Congratulations. So, congratulations, but if I can just hold the applause just for a second. Since this is the first time that we have met in person, I don't think that's uh, I don't think else. Else. a little bit of a delay. Um, as we put the room back together, uh, the gavel has not been used. The official gavel has not been used for two years. And somehow, the ga we found the, the gavel block, but the gavel itself has either been stolen or someone has found some alternate purpose for it during COVID. So, <laughs> but fear not, because as I present this plaque to our outgoing chair, it comes <laughs> with a gavel. So it's a little on the small side, but uh, we will make this work. And I would like to officially make this chain of events. I'm sorry, you're looking at my belly, which is not the best here. Um, official chain of events. We were virtual at the time that uh, Michael Griffin passed the theoretical gavel to George Tuppel. So Michael Griffin has come all the way here from Highland today so that we can have an official chain of gavel passing <laughs> so that there is an actual hands-on exchange. So I'm going to take this little tiny gavel off of your plaque. You'll get it back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I will take this gavel off. I will hand it to Mr. Griffin and we will have a formal change. What was given to me many years ago under you, I passed this gavel. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. And as I hold it for 10 seconds, I pass it on to Mr. Keel, God bless you. <laughs> you work too well. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. For, for the unknown chairman to depart. <laughs> I'll give you a, a elbow bump. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I really appreciate all your commitment and efforts working with NERPC and all the meetings that we've had outside of these, uh, these events. It's, it's, much, been, much it's been my pleasure and privilege. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you all. Thank you, George. Um, I want to take a moment to recognize the work of our two previous chairmen, George Copel and Michael Griffin. They had the unenviable task of guiding this body through this pandemic, and they really deserve our appreciation for rising to that challenge. I believe we have a big year ahead of us. I want to thank each of you for placing your confidence in me to lead this body. I recognize that it's not every day that a 25-year-old, such as myself, has the opportunity to lead a council of government that represents over three quarters of a million people and oversees a quadrennial transportation improvement program of nearly $1.6 billion. I have an ambitious vision for the year ahead. You see, having chaired a variety of NERPC committees, served as its treasurer, secretary, and vice president, and having observed numerous other regional governments through my involvement in the National Association of Regional Councils, I believe in the potential of this organization. There is so much more that we can do and become through regional collaboration. To that end, first and foremost, I'll be seeking to strengthen the networking and collaborative opportunities that NERPC has to offer its members. As we climb out of a pandemic that has isolated so many, I want us to build greater cohesiveness between our government colleagues throughout the region, from the shores of Lake Michigan to the banks of the Kankakee. Equally important, I believe it is imperative that we build new revenue streams to support NERPC's existing mission and to make possible new objectives, namely our economic development obligations created through our recent EDA designation. I hope that you see yourself as part of these goals of fostering more collaboration and bolstering our finances. It's the effort that we collectively put behind these goals that will make them happen. I'm energized and eager for us to do more, to be more for our communities and for our region. And with that, let's get down to business. A few housekeeping items real quick. 
Uh, item 6.4 on your agenda is the 2022 NERPSI Commission meeting dates. You'll find those on page six. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, uh, typically at the beginning of the year, the chairman makes committee appointments. Um, Ty has expressed some interest in reconfiguring our committees. And so for the time being, whatever your committee appointments are, they'll continue to be the same. So we've had a chance to review those more thoroughly. If you're a new member to NERPC, you, you are replacing someone else, you inherited their committee appointment um, for the time being. If there's anybody who has any questions or, or objections or like to be moved, please feel free to reach out to me or Ty and we'll take a look into that. Uh, up next is the NERPC MPO certification review update. Uh, we're joined today with representatives from FHWA and FTA and uh, those representatives, uh, you have the floor. Good morning. Uh, your, uh, there you go. Good morning. Right. Can you all hear me? Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, it's a privilege to be with you all. I think, um, Ty, I don't know if you saw my note in the uh, chat. Are you able to give Carrie Carmody Jarge sharing privileges? Screen share privileges? Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, you, have, you have them. You're good to go. Okay, perfect. Carrie, whenever you're ready. And while she's doing that, I just, again, want to commend you all and definitely the MPO for navigating you know, these uh, past two years and being flexible. Uh, and on that note, we are going to share um, a PowerPoint, but this PowerPoint should not be duplicated or distributed in any way. Uh, we do not have permission from USDOT to do that. Just want to mention that because I know this meeting is being recorded. And I Erica, can... I'm not... Oh, here we go. Okay, okay I was going to say, I can't see the PowerPoint yet, but I'm sure it'll be here soon. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you, Carrie. Uh, and thank you, Ty. So um, as Ty mentioned, he kind of did take a little bit of our thunder, but that's okay, it's your meeting. <laughs> as Ty mentioned, um, the federal legislation does require a certification review uh, every four years of um, transportation planning areas that have more than 200,000 people. And that uh, is definitely the case with NERPC. Uh, the last certification review for NERPC was conducted in 2017 and this most recent one was conducted this year. Um, we lost our PowerPoint though, I think. Well, not this year, sorry, it's 2022. Last year, late last year in 2021. Um, are you all able to see a PowerPoint? No, I see Nick shaking. Okay, all right, it's back. All right, it's back. Okay, great. All right, and so we, um, we did conduct that when I say we, again, Ty mentioned that there's a federal review team and I would be happy to kind of go through uh, who those people are. Carrie, if you can advance to the next slide. Uh, myself, again, Erica Tate from the Indiana Division, Carrie Carmody George from the Indiana Division, Michelle Allen, who is our team leader in the Indiana Division, Robert Dirks, who you all may be familiar with, who has since retired, and then, um, Cecilia Godfrey Crenshaw from the um, Federal Transit Region 5 office. I thought we, I think we lost our PowerPoint again, but that's okay. I, I, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. Part of it, I could um, hear. Yeah, I'm not going to go into the. Uh, oh, into the screen here part? Okay, yeah, no worries. Yeah, okay. it okay. keeps cutting off. So can you guys see it now? Can y'all see that? Okay. I can see it as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm thinking. Uh oh. Well, it went away it's again. <laughs> the, um, I'm sorry for this. Ty, can you make me uh, um, let me share? Let me see if I can try it on mine. It might be. Uh, I'm getting yeah. I'm getting a word from staff to try it try it again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, she's gonna have you yeah, they're they're working through Zoom to pin pin uh to the carry to the her because I had her Oh gotcha. Okay. Yeah, try it again if you could. All right, Carrie, try it one more time. One more time. Here we go. <laughs> third third or fourth time for charm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Can it can you all see it? Yes. Okay, great. 
All right, so the review was conducted virtually uh, on September 13th and 15th, 2021. There was also an opportunity for public involvement. So for the stakeholders and members of the public in Northwest Indiana to share their feedback on the transportation planning process. And as Ty alluded to, USDOT certified nurses planning process on December 17th with no corrective actions, three commendations and 17 recommendations. And we're kind of gonna go through um, a few of those here with you today, and um, I will I will start us off, and then Carrie and Cecilia will jump in. Um, I don't know if it maybe change. We lose it when I switch screens. I'm gonna or switch slides, maybe. Yep, it's back again. So maybe, I don't know. I don't know either. All right, so I don't, maybe if you just use the bar, Carrie. We can, yeah, we can see it now. Maybe if you just I do. Use it. Okay. All right. Oh, nope, never mind. I don't know what it, that's okay. We can just go through the actual kind of commendations and recommendations. Gotta love technology. So the three commendations were, um, MACOG and NERPSI have a staff exchange program um, just to connect with one another, to coordinate and build expertise. And we think that's an excellent form and a um, praiseworthy practice. I'm getting a little feedback. Can y'all hear that? Okay, there we go. Can y'all? Y'all still hear me? Thumbs yeah. up to somebody? Okay, good. Perfect, thank you. Uh, the other um, thing we want to highlight is there's a table in the Unified Planning Work Program that really shows how the work that the staff is doing every day links to their long range plan. And we think that's an excellent practice. And then um, there's a third commendation um, with regard to the MPO working to integrate social equity and broader community initiatives to align with their MTP goals and their system performance requirements. And, and we um, wanted to very much highlight that process and thank NERPSI for um, proactively uh, implementing those things. Uh, and then I will start sharing just one of the recommendations. I'll turn it over to um, Carrie and Cecilia to finish that off. So um, one of the recommendations that we had, which was common for all the MPOs, and as you all know, with the implementation of the new bill will be required. Um, of the new bill that's referred to as bill. <laughs> and that is the federal uh, review team recommends that NDOT, NERPC, and the transit, operation, transit operators in the area update their memorandum of agreement and their planning agreements um, to ensure that all of the new components are integrated. Now I'll go ahead and turn it on over to Carrie and Cecilia. Right. Um... Uh, an additional recommendation that we had was for the MOA uh, to be updated um, with uh, CMAP to reflect what is the current uh, coordination that's going on um, and reflect the performance management goals for both MPOs. Uh, the next one was to, the next recommendation was to um, update the UPWP so that it's um, more reflective regarding funding resources and priorities um, and how uh, that information um, regarding budget allocations are determined and time frame tr for deliverables um, are reflected in the UPWP. And hopefully y'all are still seeing my screen. So I'm, <laughs> every time I change uh, slides, I get a little nervous and I'm gonna lose y'all. Um, so far, so good. <laughs> okay, great. So the fourth one was um, to recommend that NDOT uh, coordinate with NERPC in the development of the future uh, MTP oh. um, funding projections. It's a, is it all done? To, oh, perfect, thank you. To include um, NDOT's estimated cost to complete on their projects. And it, the MTP should clearly outline the strategy for developing uh, cost estimates for, for, those pro for the projects that are selected. Um, the next recommendation was for the, when the MTP is updated, um, in, uh, including a report to outline the progress and meeting performance targets and statewide target for, information. If you wanna do it on tomorrow morning. 
think we're getting a little feedback there. Somebody needs to be. Um, so, and, and including statewide target information um, for all the federally required measures. And then another recommendation was uh, that the project descriptions um, included include additional details to make more clear what um, the projects actually entail. Sometimes it's a, a little bit difficult to, to discern that. Um, another recommendation was for the uh, MPO um, to have conversations. Uh, well, I know in the past there have been conversations about the uh, planning scenario on the MTP. Um, and if the MPO chooses to continue scenario planning within the long range plan, um, it should be explicitly stated what's the preferred uh, scenario and the anticipated effects of that uh, scenario. And then um, regarding the performance measures, the statewide baseline as well as target data should be included for all federally uh, required performance measures that the MPO has chosen to support within the TIP. And the last one on this slide was um, we recommend that the MPO work with NDOT and the transit partners to ensure all projects, including transit and DOT projects, have adequate project description information in the A. Uh, we did just lose the PowerPoint again, just so you know. All right, I'm jumping back on. <laughs> okay. Um, did you guys hear number nine? Did, we, did you all hear that? I, I, I think we I think we did. Okay. I will. Um, I'm trying to share window. I, the window share was a little bit lasted longer, so we'll do that again. Um, You're back. Hopefully, y'all y'all. Okay, great. So uh, the first recommendation on this slide um, was that the next iteration of the um, participate participation plan should include some explicit procedures for public access and participation um, in the MPO's processes and programs um, during emergencies. Obviously, that's a lesson learned from our current uh, continuing situation. Um, and then the uh, the last one on this slide was uh, we recommend that NERPC perform QAQC on the MPO's website to ensure that the links are all functioning properly and um, that the website actually works with most common popular web browsers and that the most recent plans are published on the website for the public. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to uh, Cecilia. Thanks, Carrie. So hi, everyone. Cecilia Crenshaw Godfrey here with FTA Region 5. And continuing um, to share the recommendations, we also recommend that NERMC outlines a protocol for documenting and evaluating um, their public participation activities and results. Also, would like to encourage the MPO to continue to work toward fully implementing the public participation plan. Um, we believe that uh, including consistent in, uh, outreach to the environmental justice, as well as the traditionally under, underserved populations in transportation planning activities. The review team recommends NERPC include a person um, to be represented on the freight uh, or someone, excuse me, have someone that represents freight on the Surface Transportation Committee. We also believe that it's very important that NERPC works with the freight partners to advance results from Northwest Indiana at grade crossing study. For the next uh, Metropolitan Transportation Plan update, NERPC should include documentation of potential environmental mitigation activities for resources that are affected by transportation activities. Um, that in accordance with 23 CFR 450, 324. Also, we strongly encourage the MPO to perform uh, proactive outreach activities to engage appropriate resources. 
appropriate agencies during the development of their transportation plan. And it would be very, very important for NERPC to document those uh, processes. And lastly, our last recommendation that we have is that we want to encourage NERPC to continue um, the engagement with the state DOT NDOT with their fe feasibility study and concept of operations on the I-90 94 Borman Expressway Transportation System Management and Operations Project. So with that being said, we would like to open the floor. Um, are there any questions? Not seeing any from the room. <laughs> and I'm okay. guessing there's none. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any hands or anything. So with that being said, the federal review team, Erica, Carrie, again, myself, Cecilia, we would like to thank you for your time. If you do have any questions following today's presentation, um, you may contact us. You may find our information shared right here on this um, last screen. Um, so we thank you guys. Congrats again to next Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Erica, Cecilia, and Carrie. We really appreciate uh, having worked with you and for being such good partners to, to advance transportation here in the region. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Well, bye-bye. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. As you all know, um, in the interest of efficiency, we are going to encapsulate all of the different uh, things that need voted on today into a single consent agenda unless uh, Unless anyone has any objections to that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the first report from the Finance and Personnel Committee. Um, Mr. Stinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance and Personnel Committee met this morning to review the financial reports for November 2021. Also reviewed were bank reconciliations and claims registers for November 2021. There are three actions for consideration by the full commission today. The first action is the approval of nursery resolution 22-01, the 2022 budget. Talaya Jones will provide an overview to the commission on this year's budget recommendation. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, go ahead, Okay. Uh, pre presented today is there, uh, we are seeking approval for the calendar year 2022 budget uh, for the agency. The overall uh, budget is released from higher years budget based on the reduction of our CARES Act funding um, being um, expended. Uh, what you have in your uh, position is based upon um, available funding that is accessible to the agency and um, the total uh, 2022 appropriated budget is $14,299,770. Um, that breakdown um, is in the, for the budget is in subcategories and it is um, included right after your cover letter. But I would like to note um, on attachment D, um, I think it's the second attachment D. I don't have those. For it's on page CARES 20 Act. of your time. Okay, for the CARES Act RLF 2020 administration budget, under the contractual services, it should not state Laporte. RLF services, it should just have RLF services. Uh, Laporte should not be um, mentioned in that category. So um, with that being noted, um, if you guys have any questions in regards to the budget or concerns, just please let me know. So we are seeking um, approval for a resolution 2201 to adopt the commission's 2022 budget of governmental funds so that we can meet our financial obligations for 2022. Any questions for Talaya? 
Mr. Chairman, the Finance and Personnel Committee has given us a favorable recommendation for approval to the full commission as amended with Laporte being stricken from Appendix D on page 20. All right, the second action item is the new three-year executive director employment agreement that's on pages 21 to 24 on in the packet. Attorney Dave Hollenbach will provide an overview. Mr. Hollenbach. Dave, I believe you're muted. Sorry about that. It was, thank you. It was tasked to George and Justin and I to sit down with Ty uh, at the end of his uh, three-year agreement with us, which expired on December 31st of 2021, and work through some options and alternatives for extending uh, a new agreement under which he would function as our executive director. Um, that task culminated this morning when the Personnel and Finance Committee uh, unanimously voted to send to the full commission uh, with a favorable recommendation our, our work product. His previous agreement uh, was a three-year agreement and we're proposing with what you have before you this morning, a continuation of that methodology. Uh, and we are uh, recommending that the new agreement be for the same duration of three years. The compensation, um, component is delineated in the first year of the agreement with the second and third year uh, decisions paused until we reach that point in time. And there's a process in place for uh, evalu self-evaluation by tie and then evaluation uh, and a determination as to what the salary should uh, be in the second and third year. The salary in the first year of the agreement is designated as $164,500, which represents a 5% increase over last year's um, compensation. The rest of the agreement is templated after our previous agreement with him with a couple of modifications to that effect. Let me go through them uh, quickly. Section D2 is modified to expand the possibility of uh, Ty being uh, having available to him uh, a vehicle provided by NERPSI as opposed to he charging us for his personal use. Uh, that's at the option of NERPSI and it is contemplating that there may be an electric vehicle in, uh, in Ty's uh, future. Section D5 is modified to make it more of an affirmative statement that we expect uh, Ty to be actively involved in the National Association of Regional Councils on behalf of NERPSI and that he, uh, that NERPSI will pay or, or reimburse him for his participation in, uh, in that activity on a national level. Section D7 is modified to increase the Pay the monthly reimbursement payment uh, to Ty for job-related use of communication technology. Uh, it was $125 a month in the previous agreement. Uh, it is uh, it proposed to increase to $150 uh, per month. Um, finally, uh, if the old agreement with him, we rather meticulously and spent a lot of time and energy uh, delineating his job description and his roles and his function. Uh, when we embarked upon that task this time, uh, we realized that the state legislature has done that work for us and that the enabling statute under which Ty functions and we operate uh, has a section uh, in that uh, statute that does a rather good job of defining the executive director's powers and duties, specifically IC 3677.6-11. Uh, so we have incorporated that statute along with the following statute that references the purpose uh, for which the commission is established. 
join those two together as an exhibit to the employment agreement and identified that as his uh, scope of, uh, of work. Uh, that in summary fashion is what is before you for your consideration and a favorable recommendation for approval from the Personnel and Finance Committee. And I'll certainly answer any questions that anyone may have uh, about the uh, three-year agreement. Chairman, the Finance Personnel Committee forwards this with a favorable recommendation for approval by the Commission. The third request for approval or recommendation for approval is related to the RDG planning and design contract for the 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Thomas Kyle will present on the RDG contract proposal. Thank you. Um, we have selected RDG planning and design to assist us with developing the active transportation element of our Metropolitan Transportation Plan, which we have to update by May of 2023. And so we're underway with that. Um, the contract that we're recommending you approve is for an amount not to exceed $98,000 approximately. Um, I don't have the exact amount in front of me. I, I didn't realize I'd be presenting on this. And um, we are asking that the commission approve it subject to future review and approval by our legal counsel who has not yet had an opportunity to, um, to review the contract. So besides that, we're ready to, ready to have you take action on it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer it. Um, one other thing I'd like to say is that at the next commission meeting, I anticipate we will bring additional contracts um, with other consulting firms to you for other plan elements that we are requesting assistance from as well. So if there's any questions, I'd be, be happy to answer them. Am I correct? This contract is not my contract. It was not in the packet. It's about 150 pages long. It, it was included as a link on on the web page. Thank you. Yeah, on the agenda on the web page, there was a live link that would take you specifically to the contract due to its length. Yeah, and I think I think the contract itself is relatively short, but there are a lot of federal documents that have to be attached to it that add substantially to the length. I don't know, are there any questions? If not, uh, once again, Mr. Chair, the Planning and Personnel Committee forwards the planning and the RDG planning and design contract with the recommendation for approval contingent upon NERPSI's attorney reviewing and approving the language. Thank you, Mr. Stimson. Uh, up next is the report of the Technical Planning Committee. Uh, Mr. Breitsky, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations. The Technical Planning Committee met on Tuesday, January 11th, and heard a presentation on the recent Raise and Ready Grant Awards for the Marquette Greenway. A Reader's Digest version will follow uh, on these awards, will follow later in this meeting. Under the consent agenda, there are four actions recommended by the TPC. Staff will now present on these actions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to uh, talk about the first resolution up for dialogue, which is 22-02, a memorandum between NERPSI and the Village of South Village regarding payment of the old Plank Road Trail uh, study. Uh, this starts on page 27 of your packet and that is just simply the cover resolution. The actual MOU does commence on page 29 of your packet. What this is to do is uh, the uh, Cook County was able to receive a grant uh, in the amount of $300,000 with the understanding uh, that we as NERPSI would also help out with that grant in about $50,000 to help bring this 
uh, trail study into Indiana, uh, into Dyer and Cherville up to the Pensy Greenway, uh, where this uh, planned corridor was uh, looking to be uh, aligned. And what we are trying to do with this memorandum is simply to figure out how we are going to pay the Village of Salk Village for the study. It doesn't um, uh, at all talk about any alignments or any type of study or any type of engineering at this time. It is simply for us to pay the consultant so they can commence the work on the plan. Uh, again, if you take a look at uh, page 29 of the MO, of your packet, that is, uh, you'll see that it talks about under number two, uh, you know, where the parties are going to talk about uh, selecting the consultant. And then when we get into number um, six of uh, on page 30, you'll see that it only covers uh, services, the MOU covers services in the feasibility planning study. It doesn't talk about any engineering or any kind of construction of the facility. So the entire project, the entire $350,000 is simply for a feasibility study to determine the correct alignment of the old plant road trail. I'll have... Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Hearing nothing, so let's move on. Uh, section 8.2.2 is the public com comment report of fiscal year 2020, 2024, 2022, 2026, TIP <laughs> amendment. Morning, everyone. Um, this is Charles Bradsky with NERPC. Um, the public comment report is on page 32 and is the public comments for amendments resolutions 22-03, amendment 22-03.3 or 03, as well as resolution 22-04 with amendment 22-03.5. I'm trying to keep this straight. <laughs> so um, it was released for both amendments were released for a 21 day public comment period, which began on December 13, 2021 and ended on January 3rd, 2022. Um, the amendments were made available for viewing on NERPSI's website, www.nerpsi.org, as well as press releases with links were posted on several social media sites. Um, there were no comments from the public that were received during the public comment period or, or after on any of the proposed amendment projects in the amendments. NERPSI did receive one technical question from the Interagency Consultation Group, the ICG. Uh, the question was from uh, Ms. Tate at uh, Federal Highway. The question was whether or not the four large legacy projects were included in NERPSI's Metropolitan Transportation Plan or our Long Range Plan, and they are. Um, and the air, qual air quality uh, completion dates were given. Uh, the, air, the ICG's um, air quality complete dates are given in the ICE on December 17, 2021. Um, all projects were found to be exempt from the air quality confirmation and non-regionally significant. Any questions for Charles? Uh, if not, uh, Charles, can you uh, proceed with resolution 2203? Yes, uh, res resolution 22-03 is on page 33 and 34 of the packet. Um, the amendment for that resolution is a link on NERPSI's website because of its large size. Um, the, resolu the amendment came, contains projects for fiscal years 22, 20, 22 through 2026. The sponsors of these projects were INDOT and 12 different municipalities. Uh, the breakdown is, and I'll give you a breakdown, INDOT had nine new projects consisting of one small structure replacement, three railroad crossing safety projects. There was one uh, planning and environmental linkages study, one intelligent transportation system project, and three indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity projects, IDIQ. Um, Cedar Lake had a sidewalk project. Chesterton had a project for new environmental vehicle preemption. Um, 
East Chicago had a new road reconstruction project. Hammond had a new road reconstruction project. Sorry about that. Uh, East Chicago had a new road reconstruction project. Hammond had a new road reconstruction project, as well as a new bike and ped facility project. Highland had a bike and ped signal project. Over had, had an elimination of a project. Uh, Laporte had a new corridor study, sidewalks, and an elimination of a project. Maryville had a new intersection modification or a roundabout project. Michigan City had three new bike pedestrian facility projects. Munster had a new road reconstruction project. Sherville had also had a new road reconstruction project. And Valparaiso had a new intersection modification project. It's a roundabout. Um, and Amendment 22-5 contains six projects for NICI um, on various phase, various uh, projects in theirs. Are there any questions or comments? Any questions, comments, additions for Charles? Well, hearing none, let's go ahead and move to resolution 2204, Charles. Um, okay, 20, uh, resolution 22-04 contains amendment 22-03.5, and that has six projects for NICTI, which I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And are there any more questions on that resolution? If not, let's move to resolution 2205. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, this um, resolution is related to the one that we just discussed um, pertaining to um, RDG planning and design in that contract. This particular resolution will reallocate funding in our unified planning work program, $400,000 um, to support um, the hiring of consultants to help us update the MTP. Um, one thing I do want to point out, and if I could share my screen, um, I think I need to get you to allow me to, to share my screen. When we went to the TPC, we were going to reallocate the the funds to fiscal year 2021 PL and 5303 funding. There is not enough money left in that, so we need to put it in our 2022 um, fiscal year funding. So um, those of you that are in the room, I believe you were able to pick up the amended pages. Um, for those that are, that are joining virtually, you can't see it, and I'm still not able to share my screen. So I'll go ahead and um, and describe it, I guess. So um, what we're looking at is reallocating the funds so that we would have $662,879 in federal funds total. That includes 320,000 additional funds um, charged against federal fiscal year 2022. We would also have non-federal funds increase to a total of 165,720. Um, that's an increase of 80,000 in the in the non-federal funds, and that gives us a total now against our fiscal year 2022 funds of 828,598 dollars. And um, so the only difference between what was shared at the TT at the TPC meeting and today is just which fiscal year we would be programming these. Um, funds against. And again, it's to help us update our MTP with consultant assistance. Yeah, it's a slight edit. It's too late to spend funds in 2021. So this is... Um, yeah, our, our federal fiscal year 2020 funds are going to expire in June 30th. So there's not enough time to use those funds. And we don't have enough left in our federal fiscal year 2021 Um to put the four, full 400,000 in that. So we're gonna charge it against 2022, which is our the current year we're in. Thomas, you can share your screen now. 
Oh, okay. Um, let me jump back to <laughs> okay. Um, can you see the the table yeah. now? Okay. So this is the this is the table that's changing, and you can see that in the ones that were approved by the TPC, um, it was federal fiscal year 2021, and we've moved it over to 2022. And so the 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 numbers that are changing that I read to you before are in yellow, and then I also, if I can. Um, that relates back to another table on page six of the UPWP. Right here, and you can see how that relates to all of the different activities. So we're programming those funds in long range planning, which is category 400 funds. And um, we're taking those funds out of what had been programmed in 100 or administration and public participation. So um, we're just shifting the funds down and it's going from what had been in for salaries into consultant contracts. Thank you, Thomas. Are there any You're questions welcome. for Thomas? Chairman, uh, just want to confirm. I know that the previous meeting there was a concern because we have an embarrassment of issues, which is a good thing. But there was some concern about organizational capacity and suitable to manage the responsibilities that came with the money. Is it interim plan to make up for some of that capacity to consultants? Or uh, are you still grappling with that? I assume that's what this is about. Is the, is the plan going to be to do consultants then for the balance of the period, or do you hope to have some staff added that given the life of the one the PDD especially? We do have, and Thomas, I don't know if you could hear that. If, uh, I'll, I'll just try to respond to Michael Griffin's question about organizational capacity given the, the, the funding scenario here to take on all this. Uh, we do have outstanding positions that we're currently hiring for. So uh, we do have open a uh, public transit and engagement planner position that will help with some of this work. And we have a programming and grant assistant position to help with some of this. So we, those are literally open right now. Yeah. And in fact, if anybody uh, from the public is interested in those positions, those uh, positions are posted on our website and they're more than welcome to apply. So we, we, we do have uh, at least two other staff people to come on board uh, to help with that. And then yeah. uh, as Thomas, go ahead, Thomas. Oh, I, um, thank you, Ty. I think that's a, an excellent answer. And the only thing that I would like to add to that too is that we are still planning on the MTP, um, the Metropolitan Transportation Plan update process to be led by the staff and for a substantial amount of the work to be done by the staff. Um, but there are certain elements that we thought needed special attention and um, perhaps special expertise. And so we, we thought that we would bring consultants on board to help help us with those different plan elements. So in addition to active transportation um, that we talked about with the RDG um, contract that was earlier on the agenda, we're also looking at um, hiring consultants to help us develop a regional public transit component to the transportation plan, um, a freight plan element, and then finally a land use impacts and environmental impacts element as well. And so um, we just, we thought that we did need additional assistance because of the limited size of our staff um, and some additional in-depth experience, but it's gonna be a hybrid between who's doing the work. Well, hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. And, and you will end up with a better product. I think we have a great staff, but sometimes it's overwhelming, especially in some, uh, some of the specialties. Yes, I, uh, I think that will be the, the case. Um, Thank you, Mr. Uh, does that conclude your report? Uh, the uh, TPC recommends approval for resolutions 2202, 2203, 2204, and 2205 in the current consent agenda. The next meeting of Technical Planning Committee will be Tuesday, March 1st, 
2022 at 10 a.m. Please note that all future TPC meetings will take place the first Tuesday of the month when scheduled. More information about either an in-person or virtual meeting will be shared no later than a week, one week before the meeting date. Uh, that concludes the report of the Technical Planning Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Reinke. Uh The last item for our consent agenda today is Resolution 2206, which involves the American Discovery Trail. This one doesn't directly come from the Legislative Committee. It's a little bit unique in that this was actually previously adopted by NERPSI's full commission. Um, NERPSI's Mitch Barlogo will give us the scoop about what's going on here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Chairman had originally uh, talked about, we had signed on su to such a resolution about a decade ago. That's how long this act has been <laughs> brewing through Congress. It's been re reintroduced under another, another number. Uh, for many of you, the American Discovery Trail is a coast-to-coast -coast network from Delaware to California. It actually runs through the heart of our region from La Porte all the way through Lake County, Indiana. And right now they are looking to the society, which I am the treasurer of, we are looking to uh, help persuade Congress to adopt uh, H.R. 4878, the National Discoveries Trail Act. There are a lot of different trails that have been identified over the years uh, by federal statute, scenic trails, historic trails, recreation trails. This would add discovery trails, another element to it. It's not any, any funding. It, there's no money being allocated. However, what it will allow is the signage of the route from coast to coast because right now many local, state, and federal landowners can deny signage because it hasn't been made official through such an act. Hence why we're looking to support this today. I'll take any questions. None, we've reached the end of our presentation for the consent agenda. Are there any further questions, comments, discussion that anyone would like to share? Does anyone wish to separate any of the items from the consent agenda before we listen a motion here? Excuse me, Mr. Chair, we may be having the same internet so I may need to come back and state that again for tomorrow. My, my laptop has run out of battery, so that's why. <laughs> but uh, I think we're, we're, we should be good with the speaker. We'll give it a second. Since we're apparently offline anyway, thank you all for not rising up in revolt against uh, <laughs> the, the length of this meeting today. <laughs> No violence has occurred here. Hopefully in March. Steve, what you missed by retiring, <laughs> not being able to. You're carrying on, it's much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have stories of uh, of uh, in-person meetings that have taken over. Erase those from my memory. <laughs> But I do, I do miss the public here, right? I really do. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> All right. Hey, I, 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 I think business. we're back. Can you, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, uh, can you, uh, can everybody hear me okay? I'm... Yes. Yes, we can. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, uh, where was I? Is there any... We Further uh, comments, discussion, or questions that anyone has that they would like to share? Any may need to reset about the uh, state about pulling something. Yes, that's next. Um, uh, is there any, are there any items that anyone would like to pull from the consent agenda and vote on separately? None. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to approve these six resolutions and two contracts under the consent agenda? So moved. I'll second. I'll second. From Greg and then second from Mr. Tun. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, the question is on the adoption of resolution number 2201, the new three-year executive director's employment agreement, the contract for the 25th Metropolitan Transportation Plan, resolution 2202, resolution 2203, 2204, 2205, and 2206. Ms. Euclid, would you please call the roll? Yes, I just want to confirm that who, I know uh, Mr. Sunday is the second. Who is the Greg Simpson is the first. And we'll take roll call now for the consent agenda. Kyle Allen? Yes. Thank you. Jeff Benson? Hi. Thank you. Kevin Breitsky? Yes. Thank you. Charlie Brown? Robert Carnahan? Yes. Kathleen Denham. Yes. Thank you. Tom Dermody. Yes. Thank you. John Derwinski. Denise Ebert. Yes. Thank you. Bill Emerson. Yes. Thank you. Robert Forster. Yes. Thank you. Michael Griffin. Yes. Thank you. Richard Hardaway. Yes. Thank you. Mike Jackson. Yes. Thank you. Scott Keenan. Yes. Thank you. Justin Keel. Yes. Thank you. Andrew Kirit. Yes. Thank you. Robert LeMay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Lori Mercer. Yes. Thank you. Wendy Miss. Yes. Thank you. Matt Murphy. Wayne Ferry. Yes. Thank you. David Feeler. Yes. Thank you. Nick Reifoff. Yes. Thank you. Tom Schmidt. Yes. Thank you. Greg Simpson. Yes. Thank you. Gerald Sweat. Gerald Sweat. Mary Tannis. Tim Sun. Yes. Thank you. George Topple. Yes. Thank you. One more. Twenty-six. If there's no objection to the commission, do the record reflect that we were advised that the commission's agreement with the executive director was on the consent agenda? There's details have been explained to us. Even with that, we elected to leave it in to have our vote be affirmative. I think it's important that if the public reads the minutes later, they know that we were still being transparent about the contract. Uh, but they were made fully aware of it and elected in the interest of the administrative economy to allow it to be part of the consent agenda. Is there no objection to that, please? No objection. Yeah, I have no objection. Okay. Uh, continue to the rationale. As you I don't for even better, but I want to know. Yes, I want to make sure that the public knows that we were fully informed about that. We weren't trying to later in with a number of other matters in an effort to try to make it less visible or, or make the public feel that we were less informed about. Of course, we these, consent, informed. these consent agendas are in the interest of saving time as, yeah. as we're required to do roll call votes, given that some people are attending uh, virtually. Ms. Euclid, do we have enough, uh, do we have a full form of the uh, full commission to pass this? Is there, is there anybody that we possibly uh, missed or didn't register? Commissioner Brown is on. He was muted. He still is muted, but I know he is on. I can see him on, and I know that he didn't respond earlier. And now he is unmuted, so you might want to call him again. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, here we go. That puts us at 27. Thank you, Maria. 27 okay. votes in the affirmative, none in the <laughs> no nays. Uh, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to and adopted. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on to NERSI's Economic Development District Report, uh, Ms. Denere Kane, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, since we last met, there has been a lot of activity regarding the Economic Resiliency and Recovery Plan. Uh, NERPC worked with TIP to identify 21 members of a steering committee that met on December 9th for a kickoff meeting where essentially the planning process and their role in that process was explained. We also have our second steering committee meeting set for tomorrow morning at 1030. Um, TIP, this is also a virtual meeting, will be discussing the survey that's going to come out as well as some preliminary data. In addition, um, we are working to identify stakeholders for future roundtable discussions. These are roundtables that might be on different topics. There's a dozen of them, ranging from key employers to um, uh, higher education and workforce. So we've been reaching out to stakeholders to invite their future participation in these roundtables, and that's an ongoing effort. Um, I might add, if communities have not yet had a, res uh, had a chance to respond to our request for planning data on your community's uh, various initiatives and future plans, it's not too late to get that information into me. So you might check with your community's planners, economic developers, town managers, and um, check on the status and see if they have additional information that they think would be of value. Uh, in addition, the survey, when it comes out, we will probably be reaching out for some assistance to make sure that um, people do respond. Moving on to the revolving loan fund programs in the last uh, month or so of 2021, we did close on two loans, one under the new Recover and WI program and one in the LaPorte County only program. We made uh, additional outreach at the beginning of the year to chambers, Lido's, uh, banking community, et cetera. And we continue to work with two active applicants for the Recover NWI program. And in the last few weeks, we've had inquiries from three other parties, although no application materials have been filed. So again, your assistance in making sure that program is advertised on your community's websites would be much appreciated. There is a flyer that's on NERPSI's website. Uh, that's a nice summary that could be posted. Um, so we continue to respond to inquiries as well as help those that have already applied. And that's the end of my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Ms. Kane. Um, up next on the agenda is the presentation of the Raise Grant Award. Um, given that we are kind of running rather late today and all of the technical difficulties, uh, Ty's asked that we postpone that to our March meeting. There's no objections to that. Um, that's the case. We'll move on to the report from INDOT. I'm told that uh, Adam Parkhouse is here, possibly in the place of Matt Dyshley, to give a report. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will uh, also keep this brief in the interest of time. Um, Matt sends his apologies. He got pulled away on something this morning. So you get me instead, like it or not. Um, I was going to start this off with noting that it has been a comparatively mild winter so far for us. But depending on where you're listening to this from, you might have a very different opinion of that. Um, as was noted earlier, areas in LaPorte County and Porter County are really getting hammered um, with the lake effect band. Um, our, uh, our teams have been out all night and throughout the day doing their best to stay on top of it. And then in other areas in Lake County and even somewhere, some places in Porter County, you might not have saw anything at all. So uh, hooray lake effect, it's the way it goes around here sometimes. But um, it is a good time to point out, and I know, you know Matt's been talking about this um, with you all before, uh, the new feature on our TrafficWise site, 511 in.org again 511in.org where you can see in live time real time where plows are located throughout our district and those plows many of them now are fixed with cameras so you can see real time road conditions and i point that out here because um, this is a really good opportunity to just uh, it's so cold that he froze. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is our link gone again or is that on this I'm pretty sure it's 
Actually, people no, are moving. Can, so. it's oh. it's yeah. Yeah. Something's working. I should have shown that off of mine. I'm going to use this damn bandwidth. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. We can still hear you guys on the phone. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Is this uh, is this Adam then? Adam, I don't know if you can hear us. I'm sorry. We uh, we need to move ahead. I guess we'll move on then. Maybe he'll come back, maybe not. In the interim, is there any other business to share with the commission today? Are there any announcements? Uh, this is Bob Carnahan. I would just like uh, us all to pray for people that are suffering with COVID. Uh, according to smart news, Lake County in the last two days have had 44 deaths. So I'd like to pray for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Carnahan. Uh, I see Mr. Parkhouse is back on. He's been unfrozen. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what the uh, last thing you heard was. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, if you didn't hear me, um, you know, 501 ion.org, great, um, great resource for winter weather uh, where you can see real time uh, conditions. Also, the Community Crossings call is live, first call of 2022. Submissions are due about a week from now, a little bit more than a week from now, by four o'clock central next Friday, the 28th. Um, and uh, that's about it. It's been a, a, a interesting winter around here and hopefully uh the weather gods cooperate over the next couple of months that's all i got thanks guys thank you mr parkhouse uh the conclusion of that report we'll go back to announcements is there anybody else who had any announcements to share hearing none we've reached the conclusion of our agenda if there are no objections we are adjourned Next meeting is March 17th for the executive board and April 21st for the full commission. Thank you everyone for your attendance and thank you for your forbearance and all of these technical difficulties. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. I'm here. We can stay for, uh, hey Kevin, we'll stay for, uh, can I get you to take some uh, photographs?